Hey y'all, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, my name is Rachel and this is Q Apron Cooking. Each week I post some delicious recipes. And if you would like to be notified of every time I post, go ahead and click subscribe down below and make sure you click the notification bell so you'll get notified. <laughs> Last week's recipe was kind of simple, so this week we're going to step it up a little bit and make something a little more advanced. So let's go ahead and get started. Last week I asked a couple of my friends what an eclair, a croquembouche, a cream puff, and gougere had in common, and they didn't know. Seriously, who doesn't know what a croquembouche has in common with a gougere? For real, do you know what it is? Well, if you do, go ahead and leave a quick comment. Thanks. So, just in case you don't know what they have in common, it's the dough. They all use the same kind of dough. And the name of that dough is called pata choux. And pata choux is a little bit different than the other doughs you may be used to working with in the fact that it uses physical leavening instead of, say, like baking soda, baking powder, or yeast. And how physical leavening works is you put your pastry dough in the oven at a higher temperature and the moisture from the eggs and the water in the dough creates steam and it causes the pastry to puff up and you get that beautiful puff pastry. Okay, this week on Q Apron Cooking, we are making the delicious French pastry known as the chocolate eclair. A chocolate eclair has three components. You have the pastry shell, which is made out of the pâte au choux dough. You have pastry cream, and you have the chocolate ganache. So we're going to get started on the pâte au choux dough. What you're going to need for the dough is water, butter, sugar, salt, all-purpose flour, eggs, a wooden spoon, and a pastry bag fitted with a round tip. If you don't have a pastry bag and a round tip, you can just use a sturdy Ziploc bag and it will do exactly the same. If you would like to make your very own chocolate eclair, you can find a link to the recipe in the description box. Okay, now that my water is boiling, I'm going to take my flour and you want to dump your flour in all at once. And just start stirring that till it starts to come together just a little bit. And then you're going to actually take it off the heat and continue stirring. At this point, it looks like a mess, but just keep stirring until it forms a ball. There we go. It's starting to come together. Okay. Now you're going to place it back on the heat. You're going to keep it on high, but just keep cooking it for about two minutes because you want that flour to cook out. What we have created here is called a panada, and it's a cooked mixture of a fat, flour, and a liquid. You can tell that this is done cooking when you stir it and it starts to tear. So we're going to go ahead and take this off of the heat because it's, it's ready to come off. And we're going to put it in our mixing bowl. Now we're going to incorporate our eggs into the panada. But if we do that now, it's going to cook the eggs too much and you're just going to have scrambled eggs in your dough. That's disgusting. So we're going to turn our mixer on low for about 30 seconds. And then we're going to start incorporating the eggs one at a time. And you want to wait till the first egg is completely mixed in before you add the second one. Now I have all the eggs added to my batter and you can see that it has somewhat of a shine to it. And one way to tell that there is enough egg in your batter is that it will make a V when you bring your beater out of it. If it doesn't do that and it doesn't have a shiny texture, you might want to go ahead and add one other egg. Two important things to work on when you're baking is first to always have your oven preheated and have your baking sheet ready to go. For this recipe, we have our oven on 400 degrees and we have our parchment lined pan ready to go. Eclairs need to be about six inches long, so you can go ahead and if you want a perfect eclair, you can measure 
six inches and then just make sure that you put your marks down so your dough isn't actually on the pen or pencil markings. Okay, so to fill a pastry bag, what you'll wanna do to keep it less messy is fold it over and just cup it in your hand and spoon your batter in. So just go ahead and start piping and try to pipe in a, a straight as a line as you can. Okay, so now I have all the dough piped out for the eclairs. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you want to decrease your oven temperature to 350 and then you will continue baking them for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, now that our pastry shells are in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the pastry cream. And first of all, you're gonna start by adding your sugar and cornstarch to a non-heated pan and just kind of giving it a little whisk to make sure the lumps are broken up. Okay, then we're gonna move on. You'll want to take your milk and mix in egg yolks. This Still in the non-heated pan, go ahead and gradually start pouring the egg mixture in with the sugar and cornstarch. After we get this all mixed together, you're going to want to add in two tablespoons of butter. Place it on your burner on medium heat, which happens to be like three for this little burner I'm using. Okay, that's going to take a minute just to get started to heating. So we're going to move on to the vanilla bean. I like using a vanilla bean in this recipe because you can see all the little specks of the vanilla bean in it. What you're going to do is take your vanilla pod and cut it in half. Okay, on the inside there's all kinds of little vanilla bean seeds. So we want to come over to our pot and scrape those in so that it will infuse a wonderful little flavor. We're going to head, go ahead and add in the pod. So now we're going to go ahead and just continue stirring this until it starts to thicken up and the butter is melted. At that point you'll want to go ahead and remove the pod my mixture has started to thicken, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the vanilla bean and let this cook for about two minutes to make sure that the cornstarch has fully activated so that it'll thicken and not have like a starchy taste to it. Okay, and that'll take maybe about two minutes. Just continue stirring. One thing I like to do with my pastry cream is like run it through a sieve. This is not necessary if you don't have like a fine mesh strainer at home. It just ensures that you have very smooth cream. And if any of the eggs happen to like get a little overcooked in your pastry cream, it will take those out and you don't have to worry about that in your eclair. After you run the cream through the sieve or even if you don't, you'll want to cover it with plastic. And when you cover it, make sure that you put the plastic wrap all the way against the pastry cream so it doesn't form a skin as it cools. After that's covered completely, go ahead and set it in the fridge. You'll wanna let this cool for a minimum of two hours and preferably even overnight if you're able to do that. When your eclairs come out of the oven, you wanna take a skewer or a butter knife and just make a hole on each side to let any excess steam escape. Okay, now that the pastry shells have cooled completely, we're gonna go ahead and fill them. Okay, I've already went ahead and put my pastry cream in a pastry bag. I've used a coupler. It works nice if you're using a pastry bag. Um, when you fill it, it holds it and the tip won't go back into the bag. Like it holds it secure. So what you'll do in, uh, we'll just insert the pastry tip into the eclair and just fill it about halfway. You'll be able to feel the heaviness of it to know when it has filled halfway. And then just fill the other half as well. You don't want to overfill it, just make sure that the middle has cream in it as well. 
Okay. If you don't have a pastry bag and a tip for this as well, I'll show you a different way to fill your eclairs so you can make them as well. You just cut it in half. You don't have to cut it all the way in half, just cut it open. And then you'll spoon the pastry cream in. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to start on the final step. This isn't necessarily the icing on the cake, it's just the chocolate on the eclair. So, uh, it's a ganache, and what a ganache is, is just a smooth mixture of chocolate and heavy cream. And you can have different thicknesses of the ganache. You can do it as a glaze, or even as thick as an icing for like cupcakes. But today we're going to make a, a really thin glaze for the eclair. So you'll start with putting your heavy cream on a low heat just until it starts to simmer. Just slight bubbles around the edge. You don't want the whole thing to be a rolling boil. Just slight, slight bubbles. Now that the heavy cream has started to simmer, I'm just going to go ahead and pour it over our chocolate. And then cover it right away with some aluminum foil, plastic wrap. Set a plate on top of it, just cover it so that it holds the steam. And you want to leave it covered and untouched for about five minutes so that it will melt. Now that the cream and chocolate has set for about five minutes, just go ahead and uncover it. And you'll want to whisk it until it's fully combined. You'll have to work with it for a couple minutes to get it all together. But after that, we'll be ready to top the eclairs. There are a couple different ways that you can top the eclairs with the ganache, but today we're just going to go ahead and spoon the chocolate on instead of dipping them. Just make a thin line down the center of the eclair and it will eventually drain down the sides and coat the top half of the eclair. Hey y'all, I want to introduce you to my roomie Hannah and she is also my camera girl. Right. And <laughs> she is going to taste the eclair today since she has helped make it, kind of. <laughs> so go ahead, taste it. All right. I hope she hurries because I'm really excited. I want to take a bite too. So what do you think of it? It's really good. Um, I like when the chocolate and the cream meat okay when, as I get you mean, like yeah meat and it like it really just adds to it all and the bread is crunchy yet fluffy and so it's really good finger looking good <laughs> <laughs> definitely that is really amazing okay y'all so if you liked watching me make the chocolate eclairs give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.